Namaste Sarasati Deve Koravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschacha Deshatarine Vanchakaupa Terubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bayevacha Patita Nam Pavanebio Vaishnavibio Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasade Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare Welcome everyone to our Bhakti Shastri study course. We're uh, going to review a little chapter 16 and we'll go on to chapter 17 today. Okay, I'm going to share this screen. Is everyone able to see this slide? Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Oh, good. Okay. Lesson, previous lesson. Overview. No, wait just a minute. Maybe I've got the wrong slideshow here. <laughs> Let's see. Lesson two. Krishna. Are you able to see the slide? Yes, Maharaj. Uh, yes, we can see. Yes, Maharaj. Okay, good. So before we go on to chapter 17, let's just go over some of the main points from chapter 16. We began explaining the link between chapter 14 and 15 and 16, right? Chapter 14 was about the three modes of material nature and the importance was given to the mode of goodness, that we should come to the mode of goodness and we should try to give up the passion and ignorance. And we spoke about how we could cultivate the mode of goodness you know, regulated lifestyle, maybe doing deity worship and taking part in the morning program, being very regulated and taking Krishna Pusada, studying scriptures, all of these things would help us to come to the mode of goodness. So the 14th chapter was on the three modes. And then chapter 15, Lord Krishna gave the analogy of the banyan tree 
and we explained how the top branches in the banyan tree were for the demigods and those in the mode of goodness, and the lower branches in the tree were for those in the modes of passion and ignorance, animals and human beings also, because we are also very much in the mode of passion. And then chapter 16 introduced the divine and the demoniac qualities. So the divine qualities are asso associated with the mode of goodness and the demoniac qualities with the mode of passion and ignorance. So in this way we explain the links between the, these chapters. Uh, the next point of discussion, the word abhijatashya in relation in relation to imbibing divine and demoniac qualities from birth with reference to Bhagavad Gita, 16th chapter, verses 1 to 5. So Abhijatashya, indicating that people are born with these qualities from birth. So some people are born with good qualities and others are born with very bad qualities. What makes the difference? The type of soul which takes birth, it will depend on the consciousness at the time of conception. So Srila Prabhupada was explaining how devotees who want to have good children, they should perform the Garbhadhan Samskar. And in this way they can attract a very pure soul into the womb to take birth. Sometimes we say the demigods are waiting in line to take birth in the Krishna consciousness movement. They're just waiting for a nice mother and father so that they can come down to the, this earth planet. Because this earth planet is the easiest place to go back to Godhead. It's not so easy to go back to Godhead from the heavenly planets. So the demigods, they come down to this planet to take birth in the family of devotees. And of course our own founder Acharya, Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, he was born in a family of devotees. Prabhupada told us his father was a pure devotee. He was always worshipping the deity. And he trained our founder Acharya, he trained his son how to be a perfect Vaishnava. He had him learn the Madanga and when there was talk about sending him to London to become a lawyer, then his father would not agree. He said, I don't want my son to become a worldly person. He had him learn the Madanga and Harmonium. He wanted him as a devotee. So Prabhupada actually said everything he learned from his own father, Simono father, was the same things which uh, his spiritual teacher was talking about. There was only one item which the spiritual teacher added into the life of Srila Prabhupada and that was publishing and distributing books. So from Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati or Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada took up the business of publishing and distributing books. But both Bhaktivedanta Swami and Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati, they were born in devotee families. So they had these wonderful qualities of devotees from birth. Prabhupada told us he said his whole life he never even tasted tea. And at one point maybe you've seen the Abhay Charan movie which Bhakti Charuswami made. You can see there the drama how at one point Abhay he gets a fever and the doctor said you have to give him chicken soup. And the mother was, oh no, chicken soup, we don't cook, we don't cook chicken, we're all vegetarians. And the doctor said he's going to die unless you give him chicken soup. So they're very worried and somehow they arrange some chicken and when they put the chicken soup to the lips of our spiritual master, then Prabhupada vomited. He vomited. He was just a little child, but there was no way he was going to take that chicken soup. 
So this is the demonic, this is the divine quality, you see, divine quality from birth. And the demonic quality is just the opposite, just the opposite. They will do everything bad and think it's good. Okay, so Abhijatashya. Then we spoke about examples of divine and demoniac nature from current world affairs. Divine, can, we, 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 I will ask the students here, some of you, can you give us some examples of divine and divine activities in the world affairs? What's a godly quality? Please give some example. An example. Yes? Fearlessness, purification of one's existence, cultivation of knowledge, non-violence. No, Maharaji, I, didn't, I think you did not understood the question. I'm asking for examples from current world affairs about divine... Current? Of current? Yes. For the, like we have to say for sannyasis and grihasthas, differently for sannyasis, cultivation of knowledge for grihasthas, we should give charity. No, but I want examples, examples. I don't want scriptures. I want some examples from world affairs. Maharaj, I like to speak. Yes. Uh, can we say Bill Gates to be one who is doing lots of charity? He has started a foundation, Bill Gates Foundation, and uh, for all the social work, he's giving lots of charity. Now he stopped his business and all the money is spending like that. Oh, Bill Gates is doing a lot of charity. Yes. What kind of charity? What kind of charity is he doing, Prabhu? In every way, some some where with the epidemic or now like Corona virus also is helping to make make the vaccine. And uh, in poor countries, in African countries, where there is some natural disasters or for a literacy, helping to increase the literary rate. He's, uh, giving points like that. Okay. Anybody else would like to offer an example from current world, world affairs of somebody doing some good work? Albert Ford is giving in the, uh, charity for our temple, Mayapur. Okay. And that, that Ford, Ford. I'm, I'm Ford, yeah. I'm Dish Ford. Anybody else? Sir Krishna Prabhu? Dandavas Maharaj. Maharaj, I see so many children age 4, age 7, and uh, they are so elevated. And uh, they talk um, uh, scriptures and they read scriptures and they are uh, participating in uh, kirtans and they are able to pay Mridanga, Tal, those young ages. So, who's doing it? Who's teaching them? Uh, it's almost like uh, they have uh, uh, these type of uh, capabilities from their past life. Uh, I mean, almost like naturally they are able to acquire these type of knowledges. They are asking serious questions which even we are unable to ask uh, these type of questions. I don't know if that's a very good example of, you know, divine qualities from current worldly affairs. I don't know if that's really very good. I mean, this is it's what you say is nice, but I don't know if that's really the answer to the question. Maharaj, could I say something? Yes. Sadananda Ramachandra. Sadananda Ramachandra So, uh, there is an example that uh, Ratnath Maharaj mentions in one of his talks. Uh, uh, he talks about Sindhutai and uh, how she was a beggar herself, but uh, she started, uh, you know, uh, she was very kind to 
orphans and things like that and now she has an orphanage with 1400 people and also takes care of cows uh, I, I don't know the spiritual status of this person but she seems to be very kind and you know uh, she does she didn't have any money herself but she uh, she was willing to you know take care of all the different orphans and cows and things like that mm -hmm. what was the name Sindhu Thai Sindhu Thai she's from Maharashtra I think somewhere in Pune uh, she has 1400 people in her orphanage she's not educated or anything she's still very humble actually uh, at least that's what it seems like from the outside, like from her talks and things like that. She seems very grounded. Uh, actually, her husband tried to kill her uh, when she was young and that's how she became a beggar. But uh, later on, uh, now she, when she's much older, the husband came back and now she takes care of her husband as well who tried to murder her 20, 30 years back. <laughs> very interesting. Yeah. Okay. An interesting example from World Affairs. Somebody doing some very good uh, social work in the mode of goodness. All right. What about examples of demoniac nature? Not difficult. From world affairs, current w world affairs, demoniac nature. Who? The Russian president. He wants. To, he has now declared that throughout his life, whenever he lives, he will be the president. Oh, oh, really? Okay. Somebody's going to be. He's taking charge. He made himself like the emperor. Not just a political figure, but an emperor. Yes. Before I was uh, going to give an example of fearlessness, but now because of the, the explaining demonic nature, so what's going on right now in Bali? Uh, those who oppose the Hare Krishna movement with any way they can, they they come to intimidate our temples. They 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 spread out uh, false accusations against us, uh, things like that. Oh, it's very unpleasant, yeah. yeah the real struggle going on there in Bali. Yes? Since since uh, they have the backing of the government, the governor, so they use so many ways to intimidate us. They they want to close our temples like that. Oh. Oh. And the public are supporting. Actually, don't actually don't agree with these, but some are also uh, they, they 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 are pushing very hard because they because they 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 have the support from the governor, which now legalizes uh, the local traditional alcohol drink and things like that. So they they uh, they push forward for these type of. Uh, namely the uh, might say the traditional thing but which is against which is of demonic nature like that but they they uh, make trouble for those who want to study spiritual life like us mm. 
Okay, an interesting example of the demoniac nature in Bali. Anyone else? Shopa, you have an, something? Yes, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Um, recently we saw how uh, President Trump, he spoke publicly and he incited so many people to march in the Capitol Hill and then there was um, kind of like, right, like terrorism almost over there. Well, what happened? Why did he do this? Uh, because uh, the new president was going to be sworn in, so the vice president was signing the um, the the agreement that the the new president has won. But Trump was not very happy, so he was inciting a lot of his supporters to go and attack, and they actually attacked the Capitol Hill, where this meeting was taking and. Um, I think one or two people also died, the police officers were injured and it became like a, almost like a terrorist attack Wow! on Capitol Hill. So it must have given a very bad image to Trump, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, it, it was, yes. Yeah, it, uh, like many people stopped offering their support to him after this. It just happened recently. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So divine nature, uh, divine. So we've covered the divine and demoniac nature. N going on, examples of ugra karma from current society at large. Are you? Did I cover this term ugra karma with you? Have you heard it before? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Yes. What were some examples then? Give the example of like uh, tunnels being built and underground construction, people living in underground also. Okay. So things like that. Uh huh. Some other current examples? Um, Hare Krishna Maharaj. I, um, in our country in Ireland, um, just uh, two years, three years back, they voted uh, to legalize abortion. And um, it's a huge industry across the world, as we know, it's, uh, millions every year. So that's going on here for the three years, and that was illegal until this new government took over. So oh. it's very horrible works. They legalized abortion. Yeah. So people are coming from the UK to have abortion. No, no, it was always legal in the UK for many long years, but in Ireland it wasn't. So. Just three years back, they legalized it. So, um, it, 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 they were going to UK before, obviously, but they made it legal here. So, it was just, um, it's, there's been, they've counted the abortions in those three years, and there, there are thousands. It's unbelievable. They came on the newspaper one day in that short time. So, um, it's a very, very sad situation. Very sad, yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Manaji. All right, then the final point. Yes? There's still... Uh, should we take that? Yeah, okay. Girinari Prabhu? Girinari Prabhu? You had this I think he hasn't selected the English channel, which is why we can't hear The Slaughterhouse Maharaj. Yes, Slaughterhouse. Thank you, Prabhu. Yes, Slaughterhouse, particularly killing of cows, Ogre Karma. Okay, going ahead. The, the, the final point, describe the destination of those who have developed demoniac nature with reference to Bhagavad Gita, 19 to 24 verses. What is their destination? Anyone remember? Yes, Maharaj. Yes? Repeated birth and death among uh, demonic species of life. That's right. We'll take repeated birth. What are these degraded species of life? Degraded, they will take birth on cats, dogs, or wolves, uh, jackals, snakes, 
Okay. Or, or even if they take in animals or in the lower planetary planets. Thank you. All right. Okay, we'll go ahead. So, connection between 16 and 17. Oh, this, this is the verse from chapter 16, an important verse, right? Shastravidhi, Shastravidim, they give up the Shastra, they give up the directions of the scripture. Why? Kamakarata, Just for their own sense gratification. So what is the result? They don't get perfection, they don't get Siddhi, they don't get happiness, Sukham, and they don't achieve the supreme destination, Paramgatim. They've given up the scriptural injunctions. That was the 16th chapter. They gave up the scriptures to act independently and whimsically. So they don't get any good result. So then Arjuna asks a question, the beginning of chapter 17. Arjuna wants to know that what about if one with faith, he follows some rules which are not mentioned in the scriptures. What is his position? Right? He gives, he gives up the scriptures. He also gives up the scriptures, not in the scriptures, but he has faith in something which is not in the scriptures. Have you seen this kind of situation before? You must have, people have faith in something, there's no scripture. Even we see in, in, uh, in Krishna Leela, when Krishna was speaking to Nanda Maharaj about uh, Nanda Maharaj was preparing to do the Indra Yagya. So Lord Krishna asked Nanda Baba, he said, is, is this Shastrik or is this just Lokik? In other words, is it just some custom which we have? Or is it actually Shastrik? So Krishna is asking, or rather Arjuna is asking Krishna here, what about somebody who he has faith, but their faith is not in the scriptures, but they have faith in something else? So what is his position? So Lord Krishna explains that there are three kinds of faith. Trividha bhavati shraddha dehinam sa svabhavaja. According to his mode of material nature, he will have that kind of faith. Now faith, where, what is the origin of faith? Where does it come from? Gita, Gita into like it, huh? Where, where does, what is the origin of faith, originally? It's so, so one heart only is faith from whom it was intelligent, from past, also. Anybody? Anybody else? Maharaj. Yes. Maharaj from association. From association, no. Right. Yeah. From yeah. desire. From desire. In the, in the purport, Srila Prabhupada say, says, faith comes from pure goodness. Originally, it's pure goodness. But because we are influenced by the modes of nature, our faith also becomes influenced by the material nature. But initially, originally, faith is pure goodness. Oh, uh, if, if you have the, let me see, I need to open my book, I don't have my book open here, I'll just see if I can find it and read it to you, because it's an important point. 
let's see. Bhagavad Gita. Thank you, Maraji. Yeah, I'm just getting there. <laughs> I'm just trying to open my text uh, here. I have to use this other computer. Let's see. You want to read it for me? What does Prabhupada say? Yes, Maharaj. The word shatha or faith is very significant in this world. Shatha or faith originally comes out of the mode of goodness. One's faith may be in a demigod or some created god or some mental concoction. One's strong faith is supposed to be productive of works of material goodness. But in material conditioned life, no works are completely purified. They are mixed. They are not in pure goodness. Pure goodness is transcendental. In purified goodness, one can understand the real nature of the Supreme Personality of God as long as one's faith is not completely in pure goodness, the faith is subject to contamination of any of the modes of material nature. The contaminated modes of material nature expand to the heart. Therefore, according to the position of heart in contact with a particular mode of material nature, one's faith is established. It should be understood that if one's heart is in the mood of goodness, his faith is also in the mood of goodness. If his heart is in the mood of passion, his faith is also in the mood of passion. And if his heart is in the mood of darkness, illusion, his faith is also thus contaminated. Thus we find different types of faith in this world and there are different types of religions due to different types of faith. The real principle of religious faith is situated in the mode of pure goodness, but because the heart is tainted, we find different types of religious principles. Thus, according to different types of faith, there are different types, there are different kinds of worship. Yes, Thank right. Krishna. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Maharaji. So that's the relevant text there. It, Prabhupada is talking about faith here. I've taken a little bit. You can just see the slide again, just to read it again. As long as one's faith is not completely in purified goodness, the faith is subject to contamination by any of the modes of material nature. The contaminated modes of material nature expand to the heart. Therefore, according to the position of the heart in contact with a particular mode of material nature, one's faith is established. All right, so people are being conditioned or controlled by the three kinds of material nature. And if they do not follow the Shastric injunction, then he will concoct, he will create something according to his position either in the Tamagun, Rajagun, or Sattvagun, right? He's not following any Shastra, well, he's following his own Shastra, maybe. He is going on conducting himself under the influence of the same modes of nature. But these mean superficially doing something in the Tamagun, he will not be successful. He will not be successful. Yashastra vidima trijya vartate kama karata. Right? This is the point that his faith will be in the modes.
But if we follow the pure religion, then that will be pure goodness. Thus we find different types of faith in the world, different types of religion, due to different types of faith. All right, so we, we have a little exercise for you. I don't know how many people do we have here tonight? How many people are in the class, Prabhu? It's 46, Maharaj. All right, do, is it possible we could make some groups, maybe? Yes, Maharaj, we can. Uh, maybe about 46, you know, about say eight people in a group or something. What we want to do, we want you to consider different religious practices and consider their merit or demerits. And then give some reference to Krishna's analysis of faith. What particular faith are they in? What Are they in goodness? Are they in passion? Are they ignorance? Are they in pure goodness? You have to analyze, compare to the practices of Krishna Consciousness. I think you all have some good experience of different kind, different religious practices. Maharaj, this is within the Vedic sphere or uh, outside the Vedic systems? Outside the Vedic system, can be also could be inside or outside. Main thing should be some modern religious practice. Is it all right? I'll give you, give you, what, five minutes or something to discuss? We'll meet. You can make the groups, Prabhu. Sorry? It needs some time to separate, uh, if, if we separate between the participants who are from Indonesia and the international... Well, of course, you've got to keep the Indonesian devotees together. Yes, so I will assign manually, but it takes some time. Is it okay, Maharaj? Maybe like two minutes, one, two minutes, is that oh. okay? Okay, that gives devotees two, one, two minutes to think about it. They can prepare some answers while you're making the groups. Make some notes.
Are you having a, a, a lot of difficulty to do this? No, no, Maharaj. This is just going to finish. Just I need just one more person to put here. One hasn't got a room. Uh, I'll just open the rooms first and whoever has not got a room, uh, uh, I'll help to, to get in the room. How many minutes, Maharaj? Five minutes. Five. Okay. Already took five minutes, I think. <laughs> Just waiting. Yeah, I, I open the rooms now. I think this is taking too long, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Who's who's coordinating here? Oh, 
Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, yes, we are back. Okay, is everyone back? Yes, Maharaj. All right, can we have a spokesman from Group 1? It's selected. Thank you, Maharaj. Can we have a spokesman from each group? Someone would like to begin? Tell us what what your your thoughts are on this question. Uh. Yes, Maharaji? Yes, Prabhuji, Hare Krishna Maharaj, Pranam Maharaj. Uh, I'm from room number one, Prabh uh, Maharaj. Very good. So we could, we could finish the entire activity, but uh, a few uh, uh, things that, uh, uh, rituals which are followed, and uh, one is the Valentine's Day. Um, it's, uh, the real essence is lost. And the other one is uh, the, uh, the thing of uh, Santa Claus. You know, coming and giving gifts to everybody and the other one is Halloween the uh, uh, thing the practice of uh, you know the Halloween I do not know much about it though and then we had so many harvest festivals in India and uh, uh, in different uh, states have different New Year's and things like that then there are certain tantric practices um, yeah, which uh, uh, I do not know about their authority and they are in the mode of ignorance. And then there is uh, tarot readings, then pranic healing, uh, then there is bulls fighting. Uh, these uh, rituals are there. So many, so many of these rituals are there. And uh, um, in which which mode uh, I I may not be able to say, Maharaj. I'm very doubtful if any if what you've mentioned are actually religious practices. I think they're more cultural activities, like Santa Claus. I, I don't think people associate that with a religious practice. Okay, it's usually in the Christmas, so I thought it was like that. Mm, I don't think people think of it in a religious way. It's not what a... About the burqa, uh, Maharaj, the, huh? the, uh, the Muslims, the, uh, they wear the burqa and all that. Is that also one of them? Is it what? The burqa, I mean, uh, the black, the veil, that the black dress that they wear, the ladies wear the black dresses and all that. Uh -huh. it is also, that is also a religious practice. Yeah, that's a religious practice. Yes. Yeah, the, the wearing of the black veil by the women. When yes. They wear every time they go out and things like that. They are in parda. It's called parda. Okay. So how do you feel about that? Is that goodness, passion, or ignorance, or is it in the modes, or is it not in the modes? Is it transcendental? Is it pure faith? It is pure. Uh, I think it is pure faith because uh, they, uh, they. I think they follow. They they say that uh, women have to be always protected, and they should not. But the she should not be. So that way, they even. Uh, uh, it may be in the mode of passion because then. 
the women is not even allowed to breathe fresh air. Uh, so that uh, the basic human uh, requirement uh, is uh, it fails there. Oh, they're not allowed to breathe fresh air. Yeah, I mean, she's completely covered. So that, that is one of the reasons of tuberculosis also, Maharaj. Well, people also protest about having to wear masks. You know, right now with all the COVID, people are saying it's very bad for health to have to wear a mask. Yes, Maharaj. But that is only for some time, but this is like perpetual. If you are a woman, then you have to do all this. Yes, when they go out in public. Yeah, yeah. when they go out in public, yes, Maharaj. So, you feel it's a, certainly it's an austerity. It is an austerity. But in some ways it's, uh, there's certainly some good to it that the, the women are, you know, what's better? You know, women walking around half naked are women fully covered? Yeah, women fully covered is definitely uh, good, but then uh, this is like more than covered, it is another extreme. Mm. Only their eyes are like, you, uh, only they, but for them to see only that, play, that is, you know, it has certain nets, the rest all is covered. Mm. Okay. So. Other practice, uh, like during Diwali, uh, many people, they have these lamps and all those things, but some of them worship uh, Lakshmi, some of them worship Ganesha, some of them worship, uh, you know, something else. People are not very clear what to worship. The different people worship different demigods during uh, the festival of Diwali. So, is it goodness, passion or ignorance or pure goodness? Yes, it is uh, when they worship uh, when when they worship Lord Krishna, uh, uh, celebrating the uh, Damodar Leela, or they worship Lord Ramachandra. The return uh, when Lord Ramachandra returned uh, to Ayodhya after 14 years of uh, exile. So that is in the mode of uh, that is in the beyond the mode of goodness. That is transcendental. But uh, the but when uh, people worship the demigods such as Ganesha and Lakshmi, that is in the mode of passion. And uh, some people don't even care about that. They just enjoy. They, they, you know, they, uh, it, uh, uh, they, uh, they do indulge into firecrackers, uh, and uh, you know, they eat a lot of sweets, and just they, they just merry around. So that uh, could be in the mode of ignorance. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Right. Would like to hear is uh, someone else would like to offer their analysis? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm from group 5, this is Sadaranda Ramachandra Prabhu. Uh -huh. uh, uh, so, uh, we were also discussing Islam and Christianity on the same uh, subject. So, Islam has many merits and demerits. Some of the merits would be actually the protection of women, which if, you, if we see even uh, in, in uh, should we be saying this, but even in our society where uh, you know uh, things are uh, okay, I won't go there. But anyways, the, the point is women are protected. Yes, it, it takes it to another extreme, but still at least it keeps things intact. But on the other side, they are still you know like eating meat, like eating meat is promoted. You know, killing of uh, animals for some of their festivals is really promoted. So that would be the demerits of their society. Yes, obviously there are other things as well, just a little questionable. But um, uh, primarily you can, uh, which is seen in the outside, you can say meat eating is very prominent. And then on the positive side, you can say that they, they, are, they are protecting women. Uh, the other thing uh, in, in Christianity is also quite similar. You know, they, they talk about distributing love and all those things. You know, thou shalt not kill, but uh, they are killing animals and things like that. Uh, if we look at uh, Vedic practice, 
say you know say baba ramdev or something like that they they are promoting you know uh yogic uh, practices you know uh, take care of your body but they're not talking about the soul you know they're just talking about how to protect your body uh, and the body is temporary we all know that but they're just focusing on how you should uh, maintain your body uh yeah and buddhists as well if you look at buddhists uh, they preach kindness non violence things like that but uh, you also see them on the other end if you see the philosophy is like everything is nothing you know like the philosophy is leading them to know it it's just leading them to become zero like so you know these are some of the examples that we had discussed in our group this was group number 5 breakout room number 5 all right thank you prabhu do you have any examples when your dis- discussion did you find any religious practice which was uh, you know uh, pure goodness uh, in our group uh, you you mean pure goodness you could say the other sampradayas other vaishnava sampradayas could be pure goodness you know like the shri vaishnava sampradaya uh, I, i don't know if uh, brahmavadis would also come under that spectrum but uh, you could definitely say the other vaishnava sampradayas following their practices would definitely come under pure goodness because they are supervised practices uh, by the supreme personality of god to which are in loving devotional service okay thank you prabhu thank you very much would just like to take one more person anyone like to volunteer hari krishna maharaj yes mani ji Uh, Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. Uh, I am coming from the uh, group uh, two. Uh, here we discuss different type of uh, religious activity with from different type of uh, place. Like uh, in Bali, we have uh, uh, Saraswati Puja, which is according to us, it's uh, in the mood of goodness because we worship. Uh, Saraswati uh, as the goddess of uh, uh, knowledge so many student in many school they will do uh, specific puja at that time uh, for Saraswati Devi so they will get uh, uh, knowledge uh, there be more serious and good in their uh, what to say in their study okay and there is another uh, uh, like nowadays the people uh, they like more to worship money i think that is more in more in the mode of passion because uh, people like to worship the one who are, who are in the position of uh, in the good position like uh, president or uh, the one who are very very rich like bill gates somebody really, really worship him as a everything because he have money and people it, and in nowadays they always always like money because they thinking like uh, money is uh, the everything like t- even time is money they squeeze out all of their time just to earn more money and there is also another uh, example of religious activity in the mode of uh, ignorance like uh, uh, in our culture we have like a uh, buta yagya i mean like we are of worshiping some ghosts and some buta kala like give them offering so in for some time they will uh, be pacified for a while but if we are not regularly give them some offering they will create disturbance in our life like that oh no you actually have trouble from ghosts and evil spirits yes maharaj and that's what's also at the moment still happening like uh, some uh, people uh, especially in bali they do like that and in the i see also like some of this also happen in other culture like uh, uh, like my sister in law is uh, japanese so they also worship like different type of 
like uh, worshiping the nature more like worship the uh, like they make shrine for the mountain or for the big trees or something like that. Uh -huh. Yes, yes, right. Okay. Thank you very much, Madhiji. So you didn't, you don't come across anything which is anywhere near to uh, pure goodness, huh? In, within your culture, Ma worship of Saraswati. Which mode would it be in? That is, uh, according to us, it's more in the mode of goodness because they worship the demigod, not directly. Yeah, so worshiping the, goddess Saraswati for. Yeah. In our culture, I think which is considered pure of goodness, I'm not sure, but like uh, this uh, Gayatri Mantra, which we recite every day, one of the uh, Gayatri Mantra actually is for worshipping the Supreme Lord. So I guess that maybe can be considered into mode of pure goodness, Maharaj. Yes, well, you recite Gayatri Mantra. Okay, very good. So thank you very much. So we see among all the different religious practices and uh, traditions and rituals which are going on that generally they're all based around some material desires, material motivations. They're not actually spiritual, they're not really on the transcendental platform but it's all you know with some centered around some material goals we want some benefit and we want to get uh, relief from disturbances <laughs> different issues which come up but in comparison to krishna consciousness of course, we're talking about the pure practice of Krishna Consciousness. The real purpose of Krishna Consciousness is to cultivate pure devotion. And we, we don't find this, this culture in the modern religious practices today. They're not teaching us anything about pure religion. Sometimes if you go to a Christian church, you will hear the prayer and you know, it's like a shopping list and they have a list of different demands they want to put to God. You know, please give us a peaceful life, let us have a good economy, let my children pass their exams, let us not get any disease, let us all be healthy and so oh, my, my daughter's getting married, let her have a happy marriage and she, all her life she'll live with her husband peacefully and they'll have nice children. It's all material, just a list of requests which they will put to God. So it's religious, but it, it's influenced by the modes of nature. It's not pure religious practice. It's not based on the mode of goodness, the pure mode of goodness. So that's the point. So religion, re, the religious faith without scripture, there's no hope of spiritual advancement. We heard actually that if you don't have, if you don't follow scripture, then this is demoniac, and you cannot be successful. You cannot be happy. You cannot get the supreme destination. All right. Are there any any comments? Any more questions, or can we go on? Any hands up? No. Okay, we'll go. We have just now. Huh? We have just now raised a sort of Krishna Prabhu. Maharaj, um, we find that there are, there is Bible, uh, then there is uh, Quran. Um, are they also part of scriptures that is being mentioned out here? Yes, there are also scriptures, but they're not giving the complete information. You know, we, we are, what is our position? Do we, do we recognize? Yeah, we recognize all these scriptures of the world. We're not against them. We are a non-sectarian society 
and we recognize that the absolute truth is contained in all the revealed scriptures. So the Bible, the Quran, the Quran is very similar to Bhagavad Gita. There's a lot of parallel passages between the Quran and the Bhagavad Gita. And so we, we recognize these different scriptures, yes? And if people follow them and have faith in them, it's very good. Hmm. But so, they do not give the ultimate of uh, pure devotion. Yeah, there must be the, the mode of pure devotion. What should be their mode in worshipping? You know, what do they, why do they, how do they approach God? What are they praying for? What is their standard? So, we have to analyze like that. Generally, we would consider in terms of knowledge and renunciation, jnana and vairagya. These two things, we can understand their spiritual position on the basis of their knowledge of the matter and spirit and the controller of both, and their detachment from material sense gratification, materialistic activities. So these things should be considered. So we know Christianity and Islam, they're meat-eating religions. They're not usually vegetarian. There are some people, there are some Christians and there are some Muslims who are vegetarian. But generally they're not. So they're Shastra for the Yavanas. Okay. We have one more hand, Maharaj. Yes. Uh, yes, Asim Krishna. Yes, Maharaj, Hare Krishna. Maharaj, is there a particularly any other activity other than Krishna consciousness? which is in the mode of goodness. Yeah. When we speak about Krishna consciousness, we should understand we're not just speaking about ISKCON. ISKCON doesn't have a monopoly on Krishna consciousness. There are other people outside of ISKCON who are also practicing Krishna consciousness. Uh, other people outside of uh, Krishna consciousness, you know, can they come to the mode of goodness? It's possible, certainly possible. There were, for example, in Christianity, there were Christian mystics, and there was St. Francis of Assisi. You know, Prabhupada went to a, a, Mus a Christian monastery in Australia, and uh, the monks there, they told him about St. Francis, that how he used to address the trees and the flowers, my dear sister, tr sister flower, and my brother, and you know, like that. He would talk to the different plants. And, and when Prabhupada heard this, Prabhupada said, Oh, that is real God consciousness. Because he saw all the different living entities, like brothers and sisters, the trees, the flowers, the river. He addressed them as brothers and sisters. And Prabhupada said, this is real God consciousness. And so Prabhupada recognized outside of, you know, Krishna consciousness, within other traditions like Christianity, there are great saintly persons, very, very advanced uh, saintly persons, just like Jesus Christ, the Son of God, pure Son of God. And, yes, Maharaj, Ma. huh? yes, Maharaj, but can we say that same for uh, Muslim religion also? What? Which religion? Muslims. Well, P P Prophet Muhammad also did great work. He helped to bring up many people to give them faith in God, give them some religious practice. Taught so many people, he's got so many followers or so many members in the Muslim religion, 
and they pray regularly and they follow rules. They have some. Yes. Yes. We should can we consider him in the mode of goodness, Muhammad? Well, he certainly did great work. He showed great compassion on people and. and, and you know, he did a lot for people to bring them, to give them belief in God. They pray to God. That's very wonderful. That's a very wonderful thing. I think there is some disturbance. Yes, there's disturbance, yeah. So. There, cert there certainly was a lot of good work on his part, and Prabhupada praises him in one of the purports. He talks about people like Jesus Christ and Prophet Muhammad, how they did great work to br bring so many people to God consciousness. Okay, Maharaj, we had some misunderstanding. We thought that uh, he has not written everything in the mode of goodness, but rather he has cultivated animity towards other sects. But it is not like that. I'm I'm not sure. I'm not familiar with everything about him. Yes, Can we call Socrates also in mode of goodness? Socrates. Well, he believed in the eternal soul. He had he had self. -re he was like a self-realized soul. He was able to give up his body. All right, we'll go ahead. We have, yes? We have one more. Maharaj, can we take it? All right. It's, it's our Bala Krishna. Uh, how, uh, my question is about what if... Um, so we we recognize uh, in uh, different ways, you know, some pradayas. So what, what about if someone then just uh, makes his own Disciplic succession, uh, but then claims that his group is the actual ISKCON, like that. He, he he doesn't make uh, he doesn't make something different in identity, but then he claims that this is because this is happening in Bali. He he was a devotee in ISKCON, a disciple of an ISKCON guru, but then now he makes his own. So it, well. It's more like, in terms of organization, he doesn't follow the, uh, the ISKCON... Uh, JBC. But he, he, but he does uh, everything else, like how, how, how the uh, bhakti rules and regulations, he follows all of it. It's just that he, he appoints himself as, as guru and makes his own, uh, like that. Well, Srila Prabhupada, in Srila Prabhupada's time, we did have the, you know, the incident, there was a devotee who had uh, difficulty to get along with the ISKCON management, and he went out of ISKCON, and he was preaching independently. And Prabhupada encouraged it, and Prabhupada tolerated it. He saw that this devotee was going to have difficulty to stay in ISKCON, to work with them, but he told him, all right, he said, you go ahead, you know, you can work independently. Of course, Prabhupada would have preferred that he could stay in his gone, but, you know, he found the, the, the devotee wasn't able to do it. Prabhupada didn't mind so much, he just wanted that he would remain in Krishna, that he would be Krishna conscious, and he would not compromise on the preaching, and he would keep the principles. So if the person is doing that, then we have to talk, we have to recognize it. We have to recognize him that he's, you know, he's independent, but he's not changing the philosophy. He's following the teachings of Prabhupada. He's using the same principles of Krishna consciousness. Initially, he came in and he's taken initiation, and then after some time, they go out. So this happens. We do have a number of people like this around the world. And even in Prabhupada's time, there were people doing it. They came to ISKCON, they took initiation, they stayed for some time, and then they went out and they wanted to make their own 
tradition. And Prabhupada didn't mind, he let it happen. He let it go on. So we have to you have to tolerate that not everyone is able to work within ISKCON. And we offer respects to them. They're also chanting the holy name. They're also reading Prabhupada's books. If they're following all the principles, we recognize them as devotees. They're just not able to work within our ISKCON management structure. So that's how that's how I see it. And you you have to you have to judge by the results. What kind of results do they get? You know, are they able to build big temples? Are they able to maintain get many followers? You now we we see sometimes people go outside of ISKCON and sometimes they're more successful than our people in ISKCON. Just like you know the, the you know you could see for example the Ritvik people in Bangalore, they were very you know very successful. And, and they did a lot of preaching, they got a lot of public recognition. They have, of course, their uh, Akshaya Patra program. And they've done a lot of work, distributed a lot of books and give peop given people a very good impression. In fact, the devotees told me that after people go to their temple in Bangalore, they, they want to become a life member. They go to an ordinary Iskcon temple, they're not impressed, but when they go to that Bangalore temple, they're very impressed and they want to become a life member. And so, <laughs> so they said, we're making many life members because of them. So they're, you know, they're, they're doing good work. They're, they're, they have a lot of programs, they distribute a lot of food, they print a lot of books and distribute many books and they brought people to Krishna consciousness. So you have to recognize their success. Judge by the results. But do we also have to recognize that, you know, they are having a, a pretty... I mean, it's a deviation, but it's not apparent outside people, but it's very apparent to all of us that there's a deviation in philosophy. Does that also have to be considered, Mother? What is, what is a deviation in the philosophy? I mean, they're saying that Prabhupada is the last guru and like there's, there's no one... Oh, yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. so yeah. Th that is a deviation, right? So, if that carries forward, go, you know, like for the next few generations, then... Uh, People will start thinking actually that Prabhupada was the only person fit to be a guru and no one is after him is actually fit to be uh, an initiating guru. Right? Well, time will tell. We have to, we have to give, we have to, it's going to take time for this. You know, we thought in the beginning that they wouldn't be, they wouldn't keep going. When they first, you know, when they first went independent, we thought that they won't last. But they've lasted, they've kept going. So it seems like they're going to be there. They're not going to stop. So you have to recognize them. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I agree with your point that we have to recognize the good. But just like with everything in uh, life, like shouldn't we also recognize both the positive and the negative aspects? Yes, such? Like I agree. Within, within ISKCON, there are negative aspects as well, right? Right. So. Yeah, I mean, you see, according to their... Yeah, they, I agree that, that it's, a, it's a difficult uh, situation that they have, uh, have a different interpretation of Prabhupada's instruction. Prabhupada instructed the GBC should be the ultimate managing authority, but they've gone independent of the GBC. So that's a deviation from Prabhupada. And at the same time, you know, they claim that they are also ISKCON and they say we are the ones deviating from Prabhupada, we are not following Prabhupada's instruction because they have their ideas about what Prabhupada's final order was. It's a very tricky situation. So only time will tell. Hare Krishna Maharaj. 
Hare Krishna. So, can, I want to ask that, uh, can we say that uh, if we deviate from ISKCON like that, we make uh, our uh, management, uh, our self-management like other than ISKCON? Can we say that uh, that is uh, right for Prabhupada instruction like that, Prabhupada? Can we say like that? Well, it's, it's not what Prabhupada wanted. What Prabhupada wanted, Prabhupada said, your love for me will be shown by how you cooperate with each other after I'm gone. Right? Or can we say that uh, the retreat is uh, in the right path? No. No, we can't, we can't really, we, don't, we certainly wouldn't like to say that. But we have to recognize, to some extent, their achievements. That they've done some things which have helped to, to uh, spread Krishna consciousness, which have helped to make, in, increase, you know, to some extent, the Krishna conscious movement more known, at least in India. We see that. You see, I, might, I was thinking more about people who actually went outside of ISKCON, you see, but the Ritvik case is a very special case that they don't go outside of ISKCON, they say they're still in ISKCON, and, you know, they say they are ISKCON. So these people are more tricky than, <laughs> than the people who go outside of ISKCON. You know, if they go outside of ISKCON, that's all right, all right, they've, went out, they've gone outside, they made their own thing, and. They recognize, you know, some, they're a little different from ISKCON. But these people, they, they, they don't, you know, they're, they're different from ISKCON, but at the same time they say they're not, they are ISKCON. But they don't work within the organized structure, within the management structure. So it's a very, a very difficult situation. Same with the one in Bali, Maharaj, although they, they are not retweets. They're not Ritvik. They're not Ritvik, but they claim themselves as the, the actual ISKCON. Yes. Well, it's not only in Bali. You get that kind of thing in many places now. People do this. You know, it's going to happen. Yeah. And you have to recognize it, that these things are going to go on. And we have to see by the results. How much are they going to change? How much are they going to keep the standards which Prabhupada set? And how much are they going to change everything? So time will tell. Maharaj, there are some people like they, they are preaching the same as Prabhupada, they are giving holy name to many people, but they are making their own houses. Then what to say of such people? They are building their own home. Uh, they have built two homes, uh, like one in Vrindavan, one in Delhi. They are making, building their own homes. Uh, they want to collect charity from people for their own homes. And they discourage people to go to ISKCON. Uh, but they are teaching the same, even they, they are pictures of Prabhupada, they are same books, they are teaching everything, philosophy of us, giving the holy name also. Yes. And I also got holy name from such people only, then I don't go there, I saw some, there are some problem over there, I recognize, then I don't join, didn't join them. But Yes, everywhere there's some problems, all right, <laughs> you know, you have to, we have to recognize, we have to see how much faithful they are to the, the tradition, to the culture. So, let's go ahead, uh, review of chapter 17, overview. First of all, faith, worship, and food in the modes. I don't know, that's a nice topic, eh? Food in the modes. We'll hear about food in the modes. Sacrifice, austerity, and charity in the modes. And then chanting, Om Tat Sat, purifies activities. So only three sections in this chapter. 
and it's all dealing with the modes of nature, except this last thing, this last part, Om Tat Sat, which purifies everything. But we're going to hear a lot about the modes. Faith, worship, food, sacrifice, austerity and charity. How they're all influenced by the modes of nature. Okay. So, austerity in the modes. Verses 14 to 17 describe the mode of goodness. 18 describes passion and 19 describes ignorance. Right? Let's, maybe we can read these, some of these verses for you. Fourteen to seventeen. Okay. Austerity of the body consists worship of the Supreme Lord, the Brahmanas, the spiritual master and superiors like father and mother, and in cleanliness, simplicity, celibacy and non-violence. So this is austerity in goodness. Worshipping superiors like the father and mother. Uh, I remember there's a famous incident, uh, Brahmananda, one of Prabhupada's very early disciples, he was a very big body man, very powerfully built, and uh, his mother came to see Prabhupada. Brahmananda had become a devotee and his brother also, Gargamuni, had become a devotee. And uh, the mother came to see Prabhupada, to talk to him, to meet him. What is this? My sons have joined your group, you know. So when the mother came, Prabhupada told Brahmananda, bow down to your mother. So Brahmananda got down on his hands and knees and bowed down to his mother. So, this is austerity of the body, worshipping, just like we worship the Supreme Lord, we should worship also uh, the Brahmanas, the spiritual master, mother and father, and also Cleanliness, simplicity, celibacy, non-violence, these things, this all austerity in the mode of goodness. Of course, this is austerity of the body, but there's also austerity with words. We'll go ahead to look. You're not seeing the screen? Oh, Krishna. What happened? Yes, Maharaj. We don't see any shared screen. Okay, wait. I'm coming back. Wait, I'll do it. Now? Yes, Maharaj. Now we can see. Okay, good. Let's see. I want to go back. Here we are. All right. You can see okay? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You can see. So, austerity in the modes. 14, austerity of the body in goodness. 15, austerity of words in goodness. And 16, austerity of the mind in goodness. All right. Prabhupada writes in the purport, 
he should not do anything which is not sanctioned by the scriptural injunctions. These are penances and austerities as far as the body is concerned. Then text 15, austerity of speech consists in speaking words that are truthful, pleasing, beneficial and not agitating to others and also in regularly reciting Vedic literature. So you can see the austerity, speaking words which are truthful and pleasing. Uh, this, this is not an easy thing to do, is it? In Kali Yuga, people are often not very truthful. And sometimes in speaking, when it comes to speaking, we're very expert in insulting and hurting others and speaking words which are painful and, and disturbing to others. We don't try to please people. But the austerity is to speak words which are not agitating to others. And also in reciting Vedic literature. So you can see how important it is. It's very good if we read the books regularly. Read, read out loud, read the books, it's very, very helpful. Prabhupada used to sit in his garden and he'd have people, have people come and read to him. And in the final year of his life, Prabhupada had people read a lot. They'd sit there and read to him. And when Prabhupada was leaving the body, one of his, Prajumna Prabhu, his Sanskrit editor, was reading to him. He was reading the purports of his spiritual master. So read, I'll read the purport to number 15. One should not speak in such a way as to agitate the minds of others. Of course, when a teacher speaks, he can speak the truth for the instruction of his students. But such a teacher should not speak to those who are not his students if he will agitate their minds. All right? That's a reasonable statement. If somebody is not your student, it doesn't do you a lot of good to try to instruct them because they may not like to take your instruction. Unless you're in the position of being someone superior, it's not a good idea to try to give them instructions because they, it may just agitate their minds. This is penance as far as talking is concerned. Besides that, one should not talk nonsense. The process of speaking in spiritual circles is to say something upheld by the scriptures. One should at once quote from scriptural authority to back up what he was saying. At the same time, such talk should be very ple pleasurable to the ear. By such discussions, one may derive the highest benefit and elevate human society. Now, uh, Prabhupada also remarked in, rela in relation to this, he said, you know, the, he said this point about speaking words which are pleasing, not agitating. He said, this is a social convention. But when it comes to preaching, we don't have to follow that. When it comes to preaching, we don't care about that. We don't worry about social etiquette. Preaching is not a social etiquette. You don't have to follow social etiquette in preaching. So it's a, because even, of course, Prabhupada had the experience, people sometimes would get upset that Prabhupada would speak very strongly to them. Cat and dog society, people like animals, the student hostels like a slaughterhouse, and Prabhupada, rascals, so many rascals he would call them, and people would get upset sometimes. And they say, you know, you, you, why you speak so harshly, you should speak pleasing. 
But Prabhupada said, we're not meant for this etiquette, for preaching. You have to speak strongly. However, sometimes it, we have to be cautious. Now, there was an interesting incident which took place in Srila Prabhupada's time. Uh, there, there was an, uh, an article published in the Back to Godhead magazine. And the article was an ec excerpt from the Chaitanya Charitamrita. And it, tell, it told about Lord Chaitanya meeting with Balababhata, Balaba Acharya, the guru, the founder Acharya of the Balaba Sampradaya. Balaba Sampradaya is sometimes called Pushtimarg. So Balaba Acharya had met Lord Chaitanya and there was some discussion and Lord Chaitanya corrected Balaba Acharya and told him that he should not try to surpass because Balaba Acharya had written a commentary on Srimad Bhagavatam and Balabhacharya was saying, my commentary is better than Sridhar Swami's. So Lord Chaitanya told him that this is not right, you shouldn't talk like that, you've made a, you know, it's wrong to talk like that. So this, it's all stated in the Chaitanya Charitamrita and they, the devotees had published this incident in the Back to Godhead magazine. So what happened was the Back to Godhead magazine somehow came in the hands of a Gujarati man, a life member, who lived in Mumbai, and he read it and he happened to be a follower of Pushti Mark, and he was a follower of Balaba Acharya. Now Balaba Acharya is called Mahaprabhu in their Sampradaya. They don't follow Lord Chaitanya, they follow Balaba Acharya, and they call him Mahaprabhu. So he read the article and he was very upset and he took the article and he gave it to Sh Srimati Morariji, who was the lady who had given Srila Prabhupada the passage on her ship to go to America. So he told her, look at this, you sent this Swamiji to America and look what he's teaching people in America about our Mahaprabhu. So the lady, Morariji Mataji, she was the head of the Sindhya shipping company, she wrote to Prabhupada and she asked him about this, how is this? Why this? So Prabhupada wrote back to her and he told her, he said, you have to forgive my, my disciples. He said, they have not learned the etiquette. There's a Sanskrit saying, uh, satyam bruyat, priyam bruyat. It means that when one speaks the truth, when one speaks the satyam, you should make it also priyam, you should make it also pleasing. So that is the social etiquette. But of course when you're preaching you don't have to do this. When you, if you're giving some like public lecture, Prabhupada would sometimes do these things. But he said, when it comes to publishing a magazine, which is being distributed widely, you should be more cautious about what contents they put in. So Prabhupada had to apologize to her on behalf of his disciples. And he, he, he told the lady, he said that these, these students, he didn't know the etiquette, that when they speak the truth, they should make it pleasing. And then Prabhupada explained to the lady, he said, actually, Mahaprabhu, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was a friend of Balaba Acharya. They were friends. So when Mahaprabhu pointed out this mistake, it was told in a friendly way. It was not in a demeaning manner. It was not to upset Balaba Acharya, but it was told to him in a pleasing manner. So in this way Prabhupada was able to pacify the mind of the, the lady who had been so kind to send Prabhupada on her ship to America. So it's an important point. We have to be careful. Prabhupada would say sometimes, he said, because I am an old man, I can speak strongly. But he told us 
you know, we were all young, he said, you cannot. He said, I can speak like this, I can tell them the rascals, I can say nonsense. He said, you cannot speak like that. Because, he said, I'm so much more senior than you. So Prabhupada could do these things, we cannot imitate. So generally the rule is, when you speak, you should make it pleasing. Be careful. Don't say anything which is going to upset the minds of the public. I remember one time there was one devotee, he gave a lecture, public lecture, I think it was in South India or somewhere. Anyway, he criticized someone like Ramakrishna or something or Vivekananda and the people were very upset and they, they came after him, you know, they had to run out the hall. <laughs> so you have to be very careful about what you say. Prabhupada would never criticize people. He would ask what is their philosophy and then he would point out the defects in their philosophy. But generally he was careful not to mention people's names when it came to criticizing people. Is it clear? Hmm? Any question? Excuse me, Maharaj. It doesn't seem like any questions. But regarding that, uh, saying something true uh, in a pleasing way, that is one of the things that uh, initially was the problem with us in Bali and Indonesia, Maharaj. That we got banned then in 1984. 1984. You said there was some saying some things in the wrong way, yeah? Yeah, for the devotees when they uh, started uh, uh, practicing Krishna consciousness and was new to the philosophy and they started criticizing everything uh, that has be, been going on as the custom tradition in, in Indonesia, the Hindu here, and then we got in trouble. Yeah. And now the, the people that are making trouble for us are again just citing those old things. Or the bringing up the old things from the past. Yes, from the past. Although in, in the uh, recent time there are some devotees still doing that, but mostly don't. Still, they, they are really like upset even until now. <laughs> mm. yes. Okay. And, Okay, yes. Uh, Asim Krishna Prabhu. Yes, Maharaj. Sorry, Maharaj. Maharaj, there is one proverb that achar hi prachar hai, that uh, we can preach by our behavior. So, uh, at our level, Maharaj, can we say like that, that if we are very pleasing in our attitude, then it will have a greater impact on other people? Yes, very true. Yes. By our behavior, very important. Prabhupada wanted that. Krishna consciousness movement would produce people of character and behavior is very important part in that character. Yes, sir. Okay. You know, I understood in Bali, I understood when His Holiness Swarup Damodar Maharaj was there, the relationships were very good. Yes, Maharaj. Well, there are these people who just uh, still have their grudge from the past, but at that time they have no, they have no power. But just recently, because one of one of them became the governor, so it was really it just blown out. Oh, I see. So mm. It's like the governor is against us, and so those who who did, did not like us from a long time ago, they. They grouped, and now it's the time to attack. It's like that. <laughs> it's it's like they were waiting for so long. So when uh, His Holiness Bhaktisiddhanta Swami Maharaj was here uh, preaching, uh, this Krishna consciousness expanded really good, really well. There were so many devotees, people joining, and now uh, we are again like uh, going underground. <laughs> really? Yeah. 
Mm. Mm. Okay. So, uh, from municipal politics, he raised his hand. Yes? Yes, municipal if you have any question. Let me switch to Indonesian Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Go ahead, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Yes, go ahead. Uh, what about when we do preaching in media social, no? social media? So we do debate with the other person. Is it a, a okay or what is your opinion, Mara? When you do what? Debate. Debate, debate in uh, social media. In social media. Well, I don't know. You have to judge by the result. Does it bring people to Krishna consciousness? Is it having any impact on people? Is it creating a good impression or a bad impression? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, Mara. Sure. So we judge by the results, <laughs> judge by the results. Prabhupada preferred we distribute books. He said, your words are not going to be much use to people, but if they get a book, that will be more valuable. And he said, what is the good of you talking to someone for 20 minutes or half an hour? You spend so much time arguing with them or debating with them. But if they take a book, that can be really positive benefit to them. So we give more importance to book distribution than this debating. Uh, in case right now in Bali, Maharaj, so they do a lot uh, install, I mean, uh, insult our Prabhupada, our Mutmon. So sometimes our devotee uh, cannot tolerate uh, tolerant uh, uh, regarding this uh, insult uh, in, in South Maharaj. That's why some, some of the uh, arguing about this one. Well, devotees have to be tolerant. That's not good. Devotee cannot tolerate. They should be able to tolerate. And they should show a nice example. They should be well behaved. No part, it doesn't, if they say cannot talk, devotee cannot tolerate. Tolerance is one of the important qualities of a devotee. We have to tolerate. So much injustice may be there. Devotee has to tolerate. You have to control the mind. You have to control the body and words. Right? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, can you hear me? Hare Krishna, can you hear me now? I don't know what happened. Oh, it's working more as well. Oh, it's working. Okay. So the, my, my point is tolerance is an important quality of devotees. Quality of a sadhu is described in Srimad Bhagavatam, Tatikshava, Karunika, tolerant, merciful. Lord Jesus Christ tolerated. Haridas Thakur tolerated. What is this your devotee Sambali cannot tolerate? Insult.
we should tolerate, we have to tolerate, we have, but we have to show the nice example. Our example is very important. So if all you can show is an example of intolerance, it's not good. Our, we're just coming to a relevant point here. Verse number 16 of chapter 17, the austerities of the mind, satisfaction, simplicity, gravity, self-control, and purification of one's existence are the austerities of the mind. Satisfaction, very important. To be satisfied in every situation. Simplicity. Devotees are straightforward. Gravity. We're serious. We're not just joking around and playing around. We're very serious. Self-control. Control the mind and senses, control our behavior, and purification of one's existence. Of course, we're chanting the holy name, chanting the Ma Mantra. We, certainly, we will purify our, our existence. By contact with Krishna, we must be, be, be becoming purified. So, purification means also developing good qualities, like tolerance and peace of mind. Okay, let's see. Prabhupada writes in the purport, to make the mind austere is to detach it from sense gratification. It should be so trained that it can be always thinking of doing good for others. The best training for the mind is gravity in thought. One should not deviate from Krishna consciousness and must always avoid sense gratification. To purify one's nature is to become Krishna conscious. Satisfaction of the mind can be obtained only by taking the mind away from thoughts of sense gratification. The more we think of sense enjoyment, the more the mind becomes dissatisfied. In the present age, we unnecessarily engage the mind in so many different ways for sense gratification. And there's no possibility of the mind becoming satisfied. Best course is to divert the mind to the Vedic literature, which is full of satisfying stories, as in the Puranas and the Mahabharat. One can take advantage of this knowledge and thus become purified. The mind should be devoid of duplicity. One should think of the welfare of all. Silence means that one is always thinking of self-realization. Person in Krishna consciousness observes perfect silence in this sense. Control of the mind means detaching the mind from sense enjoyment. All these qualities together constitute austerity and mental activities. So austerity, body, words, and mind, in the mode of goodness. We have to understand these instructions given by Lord Krishna. We cannot give up austerity. 
We want to do austerity in the mode of goodness, not austerity in passion or ignorance. We're not going to torture our bodies and we're not doing the austerity just to get recognition. We want to do the austerity for the pleasure of Krishna. So, more chanting, more hearing, reading, reading Prabhupada's books, very important. Often we find that devotees are not reading enough. So very important, we read. You know, now you're doing this Bhakti Shastri, you have to read carefully, study these purports, and know everything thoroughly. So austerity and goodness. We'll go on tomorrow night, we'll hear about the austerity and passion and in ignorance. Are there any more questions? Yes? Someone has their hand up? Yes? Ananda? Who is it? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Ananta Pranam Maharaj. Yes Maharaj. Uh, Ananta Pandit. In the Lam Bab 17, Loka 14, di sini Sri Krishna sepertinya menganjurkan ya seorang untuk memuja apa Tuhan, memuja para Brahmana, bersembahyang kepada guru kerohanian dan juga bersembahyang kepada ayah dan ataupun ibu. Ini sepertinya e, banyak kita disuruh bersembahyang Maharaj. Seperti apa e, sebenarnya e, apa namanya kesimpulan ini Maharaj? Karena di, di tempat lain Sri Krishna mengajarkan harus mam ekam kepada beliau saja. Tapi di sini dalam sloka ini Sri Krishna mengajarkan kita untuk bersembahyang kepada banyak kepribadian. Dewa Dwija Guru Pradhyaya. Is somebody going to translate? Uh, yes. Yes. In in this in this chapter, Maharaj, in the text number fourteen, uh, Sri Krishna explain about uh, what is uh, worshiping the Brahmana. Uh, spiritual master and mother and father also, Maharaj. Yes. My uh, confused also, Maharaj. <laughs> what is? Huh? Maharaj. What? What the meaning? What the meaning this sloka, Maharaj? Sri Krishna explain about uh, about the tapasya of the body is we must worshiping the supreme Lord, Brahmana, spiritual master. And also, uh, mother and father. Yes. This is austerity in goodness. It, it's an austerity in goodness. You do these things, you'll become purified. purified. We have to, and you don't just do it one time. You have to do it regularly. Just like you have a deity, you worship that you have to worship the deity every day. And in our, in our temples, every day we have Prabhupada Guru Puja. We worship the founder Acharya every day. In the mother and father, Maharaj? Well, in the Hindu culture, generally Hindu culture, Vedic culture, it's a bit like Vedic culture that you will see that, that the, the child will come before the mother and father and they will touch the feet right. just to show respect. Okay. Okay, Mara, thank you so much for your support. The first thing in the morning, the daughter-in-law will come before her mother and father, touch the feet. Mm -hmm. the,
Yes. Yes, Krishna Prasad Prabhu. Maharaj, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Sanskrit, the Lotus Feet. Please, uh, I need a little bit of clarification from the purport you read of chapter 17, text 15, where it says, but a teacher should not speak to those who are not his students if it will agitate their mind. So I wanted to know in relationship with Shiksha Guruji, Shiksha Guruji, should the teacher not speak also because they are not his students? Well, if he's a Shiksha Guru, then he, they are his students. If, he, if he's giving Shiksha, it means they're his students. Right? Okay, Maharaj. Thank you. That is clear. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Two more questions. Uh, one is directly and one is in the chat. Which one should... Directly you? first. Silakan Prabhu and Anantar Go ahead, Prabhu. Yeah. Hare Krishna, Dhanavad Pranam, Maharaj. Hare so, Krishna. I want to ask a question that uh, uh, regarding our situation in Bali, Maharaj. So the, at, at, at the moment of uh, our ISKCON situation in Bali, full of impediment, so often in uh, social media, those who are not liking Hare Krishna, they are criticizing Prabhupada and uh, said that uh, our Prabhupada uh, book like Bhagavad Gita is deviating from our original Bhagavad Gita. Then our book is, uh, they said that our book is a black, uh, black sastra, something like that, Mahara. So sometimes uh, they criticize Prabhupada like anything. So our heart is so painful, Mahara. So how we can manage uh, our situation in this situation like this, Maharaj. Can we, just like yesterday, Maharaj, we have our, one of our ISKCON leader in Bali have a debate, and they, uh, he debate like, uh, like some of uh, karmic people, those who are uh, learning Sastra or Bhagavad Gita without Guru, but, uh, the end is just like fighting, Maharaj. The devotee can, cannot say even one or two words, something like that. They just they, they speak more like that. The very bad situation. Mm, well, it was not a very go good idea, maybe, to have a public debate. If you know that they, the, 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 the other side are like that, that they're very much passionate and influenced by passion and ignorance, then it's very difficult to go in there and have a debate. You know, in Kali Yuga, people don't like to admit defeat. Even you may give them good arguments, they don't want to admit defeat. So, very difficult, you know, I don't know if it was the correct thing to go in and have a debate with them. Simply, they became more angry. You tried to yes, give them instruction. Time, huh? They are more angry. They're right, they become more angry. Well, Prabhupada says like that. You try to give instruction to people who are not your students. They, they don't like it, you know. They don't... So we, also, we also watching the debate. Uh, we cannot tolerate Mara. Hmm? We cannot tolerate it also when we watch that debate in, uh, in Facebook. You cannot what? Tolerate. You cannot tolerate. Well, you have to tolerate. You have to tolerate. You put yourselves into it. You went into it. Now you have to put up, you have to tolerate. What can you do? If you put yourself, you go so, in there. And... Can we say that this uh, debate is... Uh, Debate is like that, and uh, something like uh, we give teaching to uh, those who are not having faith, then we we make uh, like one of these ten open uh, we have.
Well, yeah, definitely you get in a debate, you know, it's, it's, you know, if it's not very shastric, if it becomes more passionate and rajasic, then certainly it will become offensive. You know, what's the good of having a big argument? You know, certainly you should avoid that, you want to avoid that. You don't want to have just big arguments with people, that's a very bad situation. Yes, Maharaj. So you, what to do? Because they insult uh, Prabhupada like that. The devotee also <laughs> could not tolerate with, with this situation. Some of our devotees even angry when uh, they saw in uh, social media, they saw uh, Prabhupada was insulted like anything. Mm -hmm. Even they say that our Shastra is a uh, uh, black Shastra. Prabhupada can, cannot make a, how about this? Uh, explanation, debating uh, Veda, something like that. It's very bad situation over in Bali now. Hmm. So please pray, Maharaj, for your kindness, uh, oh. so that uh, this our situation will <laughs> open quickly. Yes, you have to, you have to really, sometimes in these situations you just have to be patient and wait for the situation to change. Just like, as you say, you know, the governor is anti iskon So in the future, maybe you'll get a new governor and then they won't be so anti iskon But you have to be, you have to be very cautious, you have to be very patient and, you know, you have to, you have to really show a, a nice example and try not to get so much criticism. And if you get involved in big public debates and big fights and so on, and you cannot tolerate this and like, it's not good. You don't do any good by getting angry. You don't do, do any good. Yeah, you, you, they could not tolerate that they were insulting Prabhupada. But you gave them the chance to insult Prabhupada. You gave them the chance by having the debate. You know, that's not our program. We don't get in debates. That's not really the, what how we're. Yeah, you know, when Sanatan Goswami and Rupa Goswami were living in Vrindavan, there was a big uh, scholar came, and he wanted to debate with them, and so they said, "Oh yeah, okay, you defeat us," and they they both signed the paper. They both signed the paper admitting they'd been defeated by him. But, it, but Jiva Goswami then came, and Jiva Goswami came and he challenged that debater and he defeated him very badly. And he defeated, because he wanted to defend the honour of his guru, because Jiva Goswami is like the, the disciple of Sanatan Goswami, Rupa Goswami. And so he wanted to defend their honour and he defeated that scholar. But Rupa Goswami was very upset with Jiva Goswami and said, how you could do this? He said, you shouldn't do this. You should not argue with him. You shouldn't debate it with him like that. It's not proper. It's not the behavior of the Vaishnava. So you have to be careful about what kind of situations you get involved in, how you deal with these, these people. You know they're very much against Prabhupada and against Iskon. And if you give them the chance, then they will openly blaspheme. It's not good. We avoid people who are anti, who are demons like that. We keep away from them. We don't go and debate with them. We avoid them because you gave them the chance to be more offensive by de by arguing, by debating with them. You gave them the opportunity to blaspheme more. So you made them more offensive. You didn't help the situation, you made it worse. So I, I, you know, I don't think you did the right thing in agreeing to and in, in having a debate. I don't think that was the right thing to do. All right, there's a, there's a hand up still. Somebody has a hand up. Anant, Ananta Prabhu? It's his twin, my friend. You know what's up? 
Huh? It is his twin brother. Oh, okay. Silakan Bu Dina. Mara dan Nawat Pranam. Saya ingin bertanya tentang uh, Saumia Kwam Kwam atau uh, tanpa penipuan terhadap orang lain atau di sini di uh, apa namanya kejujuran ya ya nah sering kali ya dalam diri saya juga sering sekali kadang-kadang melakukan hal yang tidak jujur kadang-kadang uh, dari dalam penyembah lingkungan penyembah lah makanya kadang-kadang terjadi penipuan terhadap penyembah itu sendiri yang ditipu karena penyembah seperti itu bagaimana entarat untuk bisa kita menjaga sifat-sifat kejujuran kita sebagai penyembah Yes. Can you hear the English, Maharaj? No. Or only Indonesia, Maharaj? I'm only hearing Indonesian. So, uh, it's already translated, but I think, Maharaj, you forget the English because of your trouble just now. And his question is about Saumyatwa, Maharaj, about duplicity. Because sometimes devotees become victimized by this duplicity mentality. So how to overcome that, Maharaj? Which mentality? The Saumyatwam, the duplicity. Duplicity? Yes, Saumyatwam. Often devotees become the victim of this mentality. How to maintain honesty also, truthfulness. Well, what can we say? Devotees, you know, we're. You mean other devotees are not other devo devotees are duplicitous with them. Other devotees are not straightforward. Uh, Sometimes he himself yeah. also shows some other. Yeah, yeah. Seperti itu terjadi, man. It, it happens often, man. He saw and also he sometimes have that mentality. In himself. You mean other devotees cheat him? Yeah. Uh, so sometimes it happens, uh, even in the in you know, amongst devotees, one devotee would cheat another. So uh, how do we avoid uh, this, and how do we maintain our honesty as devotees? Well, all, all of our dealings should be Krishna conscious. All of our dealings should be Krishna conscious. It's, we simply, our business is simply to talk about Krishna, to discuss topics of Krishna, and to chant the holy name of Krishna. I don't know where the cheating, how the cheating comes in. I don't know where the, dupli, the, du, uh, the, the duplicity comes in in the character. If we are practicing Krishna consciousness fully, there's no room for this. Because if you're fully engaged in chanting and hearing and discussing topics of Krishna, there's no room for any of this duplicity. It's a deviation from the Krishna conscious program. The duplicity comes when you get involved in different material dealings. When you start dealing with people maybe in money or business or different relationships with the other sex or something, then there could may be some duplicity. Yeah. But if we're just practice, if yeah. we're just, a, if our relationship is based on Krishna and topics of Krishna, I don't see how there could be duplicity. So we want to enforce that mood of Krishna consciousness. Simply chanting the holy name of Krishna and taking part in the kirtan and worshipping the deity and just engaging in these basic activities of bhakti yoga. If we're strictly bhakti yogis, I don't think there will be duplicity. The duplicity comes when we start becoming karmis. When we're karmis, when we're fruit of workers, then there's duplicity. 
But as a devotee, there won't be duplicity. The genuine heart of the devotee will be straightforward. So I think we need to increase our devotion, increase our Krishna conscious activities. More hearing and chanting and no time for other things. Just simply concentrate on being Krishna conscious. I think that can solve a lot of the problems. Thank you, Maharaj. All right, we'll stop here tonight. Thank you very much. Yes. Srila Prabhupada. Huh? We keep it for the question in the chat. Oh, the question in the chat, yeah. What's up? It is uh, regarding the austerity of the speech, Maharaj. If there is a particular situation when if we speak the truth or truthfully, it won't be pleasant for someone. And if we want to please that person, we must tell the lie or untruth. So in this kind of situation, should we speak the truth or the lie? Sometimes you just have to be silent. If you can't say anything good, then don't say anything. Just keep quiet. Just chant Hare Krishna. The chanting of the holy name will solve all the problems. You don't need to say something. You know something is not pleasing. Don't make a scene. Don't make a, any nasty incident. Don't disturb the minds of people. Just chant the holy name of Krishna. You don't need to say. Just control the tongue. Chant the holy name of Krishna. Then all the problems will be solved. Okay. Thank, thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada.